Hello. <laughs> Welcome in, y'all. Thanks for coming. Meet Puppet Rock. Daniel, Bruce, 420, hi, <laughs> Al Bundy, Anaconda, it's good to see y'all. Papa's Jim, it's good to see you. So I had planned this live tonight and um, you know how our plans don't always work. Well, <laughs> um, it, it changed. <laughs> I know y'all are sick of hearing about it. I am too, but it just keeps growing. <laughs> and I'm just like, what on earth is happening here? And, well, there's one way of looking at it that just keeps popping up. And it's the second coming. And um, I've tried to... <laughs> I've tried to... Deny it. Hey, what life? Good to see you. I've tried to avoid it. I've tried to, um, and because I feel like there's more that I need to do, and my kids and grandkids, and I'm just like, <laughs> I don't know. But I, I'll just share these things with y'all and see what y'all think because I would really like your input. Um, it's just, it, it's like it's just all falling into place. And um, I think we've been preparing in the wrong way um i mean someone will benefit from it i'm sure but um <laughs> okay let me see where do i begin <laughs> um uh, i'll start with the scripture This is Ezra 3.8, Restoration of the Temple Begins. Now in the second month of the second year of their coming to the house of God at Jerusalem, Zerubbabel, the son of Shiltil, Joshua, the son of Josedek, and the rest of their brethren, the priests and the Levites and all those who had come out of the captivity to Jerusalem began work and appointed the Levites from 20 years old and above to oversee the work of the house of the Lord. <sighs> that's that's um one of the <laughs> one of the things. <laughs> I know, Meat Puppet, you have been saying. <laughs> Hi, Sharon, how are you? Everyone has been saying that. But I'm saying that I've been, I've been, um, <laughs> like I said, in denial, fighting it, like, not, not fighting it, but not, um, listening not 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 <laughs> I don't know what to say what is the word I mean I believe it 
I know that he's coming back. I just, um, Am I okay tonight? No. <laughs> it's been a rough day. It's been a rough weekend. Um, my mother came to stay with me out of the blue. Um, she's never done that in my whole adult life. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it was just a shock and... Um, she just left last night and I am off <laughs> and um, so it's because with her staying here with me for several days I'm seeing things that I didn't want to see I'm not ready for her to be Uh, <laughs> in that condition. And, um, but she plays a good act. <laughs> I'll tell you, she can, she can fool the hospitals. She, she can fool a lot of people, but I know her too well. <laughs> yes, sweet puppet, but I know I am. And uh, because, oh, don't start me crying. <laughs> the world means my family, my children, my grandchildren. <laughs> and so if that's what you mean by that, then yes, <laughs> that's what I'm attached to. How can we not be? And so it's I don't know. Oh let me let me see what I was gonna share first. Um <laughs> so um I guess this one at the and it's so this is this is just chill. This is not, um, and you know what? I'm not even going to share it. I'm going to drop the link, and y'all can look at it because it's kind of long. But uh, this is what Austin is doing, and <laughs> exactly how. <laughs> Um, Austin did this, <laughs> it's like a 30 to 45 minute long news press conference, whatever you call it. And, um, <laughs> they're expecting a million people and they're telling them that the best view is West go out west <laughs> and I'm like no I'm west don't go west <laughs> um, and, and the other night I said uh, uh, I mentioned NASA but, and I was totally wrong about that NASA is going to be in Austin they are setting up um telescopes and and all kinds of stuff to for this eclipse I'm telling y'all they are making this huge and um <laughs> no frog um and so all this time I've been like why why all the hype what what is the deal here Yeah, Al, I do too. And that I'm seeing it. I'm, well, so Austin's expecting a million people just there. Just there. And, um, yeah, 
uh, we're getting more warnings. I just got one. <laughs> they just keep sending them to me. Our electric company, the um, the county, the they just they just keep coming and um the deal with austin that, that i put the link for y'all they go into the traffic that i mean they keep on saying best thing is to just stay home and look up <laughs> you will see it and that's true um I don't, I don't know about y'all's area. I know all areas are different, but um, and the problem is, though, <laughs> the weather is supposed to not be well um, Monday. It, it's, it's supposed to, um, let me see, <laughs> I know it's supposed to be cloudy, they're hoping for high clouds. The high clouds are the puffy clouds that the sun will come out every so often. If they're low clouds, not so much. And so the visibility will probably be affected. And um, like I'm showing rain Monday afternoon and all day Tuesday, Tuesday night when people are traveling back, whatever it, it's and So another thing that they've been talking about is, um, oh, where'd it go? So usually Thanksgiving is the biggest time for traffic accidents and fatalities. And they're saying that Going by the data that they have from the eclipse last year, that um, this one they're expecting more. Um, they're saying that there's an extra vehicle crash every 25 minutes and one extra crash fatality every 95 minutes. And that's um during the last eclipse or thanksgiving i can't remember which they were going by but that was their estimate or that was their findings this last year either the eclipse or thanksgiving <laughs> can't remember but still that's a lot and there's a whole lot of people we've got to be praying for that I'm, if y'all can stay at home, goodness sake, stay at home. <sighs> yeah, the Masters Golf Tournament. Well, and that's Austin. They're having the, um, I think they're having some kind of a marathon this weekend. They're having the Country Music Awards. They're having, um, something else and so there are <laughs> they're gonna be over packed so it's no wonder they're expecting that many people when they've got all these other things going on i mean the country music awards that's pretty major a lot of people go to that um it <laughs> i'm i'm all set <laughs> I got my groceries for the next two to three weeks. Filled my car up with gas. I, I did all the stuff they say to do, and I am not going anywhere. I'm not leaving. <laughs> we'll go outside, and that's, I, I bought a bunch of plants, the vegetables that I'm going to get started. There's some that I wasn't able to get that, I'm hoping to get them before they're gone. But hey, Janet, good to see you. So, okay, let me. 
Let's see. <laughs> There's so many things that I saved up here to share with you all about this, but okay. That'll be the first one, I guess. Um, here we go. Well, how do we prepare for the second coming of Christ? Uh, the question is a great one. It's always relevant. And it comes to us today from a listener to the podcast named Sarah. Thank you for this podcast, Pastor John. She writes, how do I prepare for the second coming of Christ properly? Uh, what can I expect? What is to come? What should I be doing now as I eagerly await his return? One way to summarize our preparation for the second coming is to say that there are three impulses that help us be ready. One, the impulse that comes from the glorious prospect of seeing the Lord. Two, the impulse that comes from the necessity of suffering before he comes. Three, the impulse to be found faithful and vigilant in our particular callings when he comes. So let me illustrate each of those three impulses, because th that's the answer to the question, how do you prepare? You prepare by responding biblically to those three impulses. First, first the impulse that comes from the glorious prospect of seeing the Lord. First John 3, 2, and 3. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, that's the second coming, when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself now as he is pure. So think about the psychological dynamics of those verses. When he says, everyone who thus hopes in him, he's referring to hoping to be like him. When he appears, we shall be like him. Whoever thus, hoping to be like him, thus hopes in him, will purify himself now. So the point is, if you really want to be like him by seeing him when he comes, you'll pursue being like him now. You will. So the impulse of becoming a radically pure, holy, loving, sacrificial, Christ-like person now is the intense hope and desire for that to happen when he comes and we see him. That's the first impulse. Second, the impulse that comes from the necessity of suffering before Jesus comes. Now, I have in mind here all Christian suffering because Paul said that through many tribulations we must all enter the kingdom of God. Acts 14.22, and I have in mind the suffering that will become more intense near the end when Paul says in 2 Thessalonians 2.8, the lawless one will be revealed in the earth, whom the Lord Jesus will kill with the breath of his mouth and bring to nothing by the appearance of his coming. Now, Jesus speaks of that season of lawlessness in Matthew 24, 11 to 13. Many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness is increased, the love of many will grow cold, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. So the implication is that we should get ready for the Lord's coming, one, by being spiritually and mentally alert to satanic deception and false teaching. Two, 
We should be completely submitted to the Word of God rather than being lawless or self-willed. Three, we should be cultivating strong faith in the sovereign goodness of God so that we can endure to the end through whatever suffering comes our way. And just a word about how this applies to today, perhaps more than any other time in history. I could be wrong about that, but that's my guess. Human beings have developed popular as well as intellectual and sophisticated ways of denying the existence of any divine law or standard. We have found a way to claim plausibility for creating our own truth, creating our own right and wrong, creating our own identity. If you are born a man and you want, you want to be a woman, then there is no law in God, no law in nature, no law in culture to hinder you. You do whatever you think you want to do. You are a law to yourself. That's what Jesus means by lawlessness, and it is multiplied and increased. And Jesus says such lawlessness will be multiplied, will be increased, and that the effect is a tragic coldness of love among Christians. So one way to prepare for the second coming and its antecedent sufferings is to submit ourselves with intelligence and wisdom and joy to the absolute standards of God's law for the sake of warm love, not cold love. Number three, the third impulse to be ready for the second coming is the impulse to be found faithful and vigilant in our particular callings. Over and over and over in the New Testament, we are told to be watchful, to be awake, to be ready. What does that mean? I think the parable of the ten virgins is a good illustration of what it means. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. So that's a picture of being ready for the second coming, the bride returning. Five of them were foolish, five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, and that's Jesus' hint that there's going to be some distance of time, they all became drowsy and slept. All of them slept, all ten, not just five, all five, all ten slept. But at midnight, there was a cry, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins rose, trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready, ready, went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins also came, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he said, Truly, truly, I say to you, I do not know you. And here's Jesus' conclusion. Watch, therefore. So the conclusion of the whole parable is answering this question. How do you get ready? Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day or the hour. Now, what does that mean? Watch. Both the wise and the foolish virgins were asleep, and there was no criticism. That's not a problem. To watch, therefore, doesn't mean Any kind of artificial getting up at night, looking out the window, uh, paying a lot of attention to end time conspiracy theories. Watch means do your job really well for Christ's sake. They had an assignment have your lamps, have your oil, respond to the announcement when it's given, light the way the bridegroom in. And they did their job just the way they should, and they entered in. They were morally, spiritually, you might say professionally, awake. They did their job the way God meant for them to do it. So that's what you find all over the New Testament. The Master has given all of us assignments for while he's gone. Gifts, resources, abilities, money, 
opportunities, relationships, spiritual disciplines, all of those are spheres where we do our job with faithfulness and diligence. One of the most important texts for me over the years as a pastor, and even still, is Luke 12, 42, where he says, like, I'm, I'm hearing this spoken right to me, John Piper. Who then, John Piper, is the faithful and wise manager whom his master will set over his household to give them their portion of food at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. You know what that means for me? That means, Piper, work your faithful fanny off to speak truth on Ask Pastor John. (laughs) (laughs) And if the Lord comes and finds you getting ready the day before you record, you'll be glad you were at work. (laughs) Yes, I will. So, Let your life be guided by, one, the impulse that comes from the prospect of seeing the Lord. Two, the impulse that comes from the necessity of suffering. Three, the impulse to be found faithful, vigilant, full of love to Christ in our particular callings. And then we will hear him say, enter into the joy of your master. Wonderful. Thank you, Pastor John. Sarah, thank you for the great question today. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, you can ask a question of your own, search our growing archive, or subscribe to the podcast, all at Des- So there's that. <laughs> I think I missed what the suffering was going to be, but... I've seen a lot of people who are who who are really joyous at his coming and kind of envy them. Um, I I am. I mean, oh my goodness. I don't know. <laughs> So, on April the 8th, there is, <laughs> um, there's the eclipse, which it is said that the eclipse happened when Jesus was hung on the cross. And um, I showed that video to y'all last time where the girl was saying that she was reading the Bible from 1811, I think, or something like that. And um, how it was saying Easter Day was on April the 8th or April the 9th. April the 8th is whenever there was an eclipse when Jesus died, but that he was dead in the tomb for three days. Oh, I can't remember how she said it, but she was reading it from that Bible, and that Bible was giving the dates and literally saying it. And you can't doubt that. Um, thank you, me, <laughs> Hello. Hi, Miss Bonnie. <laughs> How are you? Uh, I'm out playing in traffic with stupid people. <laughs> playing in traffic with stupid people. Uh-huh. Uh, one thing I, I, I heard you, you were just talking about the, uh, the timing of, uh, Passover or whatever around the crucifixion or, or yes. something close to that. Yes. I've done a little bit of study on that. And the two prominent dates that have come up was 
uh, around the er, the first five or eight days of April of either AD 30 or AD 33. There's no definitive, they haven't been able to definitively prove which of those two dates was the date for the crucifixion, but based on the biblical account and the way Passover falls, because it happens the first, it's either the first new moon or the first full moon uh, after the spring solstice, which is usually, it moves back and forth because it's based on the moon. Sometimes it's in March like last year or like this year it's in April. Right. Uh, so it moves around a little bit, but those are the general consensus from people who have studied it a lot more than I have. Yeah. It seems to be the That's general what consensus. I'm, I wonder when the calendar was created. Because they used to just count it by the moons. Gregorian calendar was started uh, sometime around this time of uh, Caesar Augustus or Constantine, somewhere in there. I forget the exact time because uh, I haven't looked at it in a while, but I've heard it once before. Uh, they started our current Gregorian style calendar sometime. Uh, around Constantine, a little bit before, maybe a little after. Someone would have to internet search it, or someone in the chat might know. I'd, but somewhere in that time frame, right? Before that, it so, was they were more the 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 Jewish style moon lunar based calendar, which was three. It wasn't three hundred and sixty days. It was like three hundred days or three hundred and forty days, something. Like I, I forget the exact day count, but I know it was less than the, the 365 that we have now. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so, one of the one of the gentlemen that I spoke to couldn't be here tonight, George, mm -hmm. and he sent me. I mean, I knew some of these things that were happening, but. Right. Um, so full solar eclipse happening on April 8th, which will yep. arrive six years, six months, six weeks, and six days after the last great American eclipse. I think it might actually be closer to seven years. It just depends on, on how you count it, but I've heard both of those. Uh, the one you just mentioned plus the one I just mentioned, I've heard it both ways, but yeah, somewhere between the, the six, six, six or seven years. Somewhere right in there. I thought that was kind of weird, but yes. And then, um, so also on April the 8th this year is the Devil's Comet. Yep. That's going to appear. Some Don't say forget it's the planetary. Or, sorry, go ahead. It, they, some say it's either going to come towards the Earth or it, it's going to be visible either way. I and think then, it, from what I, I've heard is visible, but if you have like binoculars or a telescope, is what I've heard. But I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. And then CERN's proton synchrotron booster yeah, yeah. will be reactivated. Yep. Although it's already... CERN wrapping up on March 22nd or I've heard they want to fire at full power is what I've heard but I, I've not I've been able to that confirm else. that also and there's a uh, planetary alignment of like six or seven yes. planets yes. on April 8th that and uh, NASA's launching those satellites the into the upper atmosphere yeah three spaceships or whatever they are yes yeah, yeah. and so it's like um all these things happening okay and then the rest of it is and on the tent the super proton yeah. synchrotron will be reactivated as well Mm -hmm. 
Crowley, who consulted the same astrologist as Bankster J.P. Morgan, and who claimed he first channeled an entity named, is it Awas? Whom he identified as Satan on April 8th, 1904. <coughs> they remained in communication for three days or until the 10th. During that time, he was instructed to draw an X symbol. Oddly enough, April 8th is the day of the X eclipse, everything is X now, which will have three rockets launched into it, possibly causing some communication disturbances, which we've heard that also. The second rocket will launch at 3.22 p.m. The number associated with the Skull and Bone Society, the third rocket, will be reportedly launched at 3.33, just to fit in the magic 33, of course. <laughs> and... <laughs> So we know what all that means. And um, so all of that happening at the same time, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a lot. It's good to see you. Me personally, it's always felt uh, it, it's felt a little off or uh, uneasiness about the eclipse anyway. Mm hmm. Uh, but but know. with all of those things happening in the atmosphere at the same sure. time, I could see where something would go. Well, a yeah, something could definitely happen. There, there's a good possibility that something could. Then again, maybe not. I'm right. inclined to think that it probably will because they're not just going to have extra National Guard, the Department of Transportation. And a lot of extra sheriffs out there at all these places just for crowd control. That's stupid. The no. cops can handle that. Yes. That's and that's and, what, and it's happening in Texas, Florida, uh, Ohio. Uh, they're closing down schools, telling yes. people to get all this extra crap. I don't know. It's, I don't Those trust the talking heads anymore and I can throw them, but a lot seems, of businesses are gonna be closed. It's yeah. it's like I the, the part with the talking heads of what they've been putting out there uh, of all these warnings and stuff, uh, that's unusual, but I've ignored that part and just on my own. I don't know. I just, something doesn't feel right. I won't be anywhere well, near any of the totality path stuff. I'll be at work or whatever. Well, I'll be at home, but, uh, you know, close enough to where if work calls, I could do something. But Well, I can't really do that. I mean... <laughs> I would have to, I don't know where I'd have to get. I'm not going to Mexico. Um, well, I mean, as long as you're, you, you are west of the Mississippi, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you're good then. That's all that matters. And, and if you're looking for an explanation as to why, uh, I can do that later, but I'm not going to do that here on chat. Hey, Pappy Two Bears. Good to see you. Hey, Gigi. Hello well, to um, the people in the chat. I'm I'm not ignoring you. I'm just concentrating. <laughs> Gigi, I can't go to Canada. I don't have a passport or nothing. It's too cold. You wouldn't oh. want, you wouldn't want to go to Canada anyway. No. <laughs> and oh, here's here's the other thing um, that I. It, I, I mean, it just, it kind of fits. Random JL, good to see you. Um, so I'm going to read this so I can't see chat, but see what y'all think. Trillions of cicadas. Am I saying that right? Set yeah, cicadas. Yep, there's two different sets of cicadas coming out across the Set Midwest. To as two broods emerge for the first time in 200 years. Yep. And... <laughs> So, and a small portion of them will be uh, in the path of totality. Most of them are Wisconsin, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana. Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin. I think some in Missouri, some down near Kentucky ish uh, area. Seems to have quite a bit of them. Yeah, you, uh, there's a there's a map online, and you just Google search it and find it at your convenience. Yeah. And so it says trillions of two different broods of yep. noisy 
cicadas are expected to emerge in parts of the southeastern United States for the first time in more than two centuries, according to a scientific study. The two types of cicadas, brood 19 and brood 13, will co-emerge this spring in what experts call cicada ghetto. <coughs> the last time these two broods <laughs> known to crawl out from underground every 13 or 17 years, respectively, emerged at the same time was back in 1803 when Thomas Jefferson was president. Yeah. We've got trillions of these amazing living organisms to come out of the earth, climb up on trees, and it's just a unique experience, a sight to behold. Georgia Tech bi Bios whatever said. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, said and so um uh, it, i mean it's, uh, it's a lot day, happening at once yes and back in the day it was the the plagues well look what we've had going on the past five years it was the locusts it was mm -hmm. you know could it be uh, no, these cicadas are, aren't that. No, no, that stuff didn't start until after the uh, covenant with many assigned. And then, then all the real crazy stuff starts happening. This is all just a pregame. Yeah. A uh, prelude, if you will. Yeah. And th that's, that's, that's what I'm, well, that's what that video, sh what she showed the other day from that Bible or one of the videos that I shared is so it would be 40 days from the 8th and yeah, which is, so yeah. I think they're saying like May the 13th something like that I've heard I think 18th or 19th but yeah yeah about 40 days yeah there's some but, people have a 40 day theory I forget what it was exactly but it would actually be the end of May if it was 40 days, wouldn't it? First of June. But uh, Well, 40 days, I believe, if if the counts I heard are right, and it may not be, so uh, someone in the chat will have to look it up because I'm driving. Uh, but 40 days, I believe, would be around the 18th or 19th of May, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And, yes, Gigi, that's, that's what I was... Saying a while well, ago. April eighth to May eighth is is thirty days. Hey Regina, good to see. You. Ten days after that would be the eighteenth. So be right around the eighteenth. So so that's the thing is okay if if all this is lining up for that. Hallelujah, right? But for, we well, also for, hold on, lining up for what though? I, I didn't see the video. So the coming of Jesus. So oh, the no, so now, probably not. The, the second coming, definitely not. No, there's still too much that has to happen before that. Really? Yes, ma'am. So basically, the, the, I'll give you the Cliff Notes version to keep it uh, that uh, simple for everyone to understand. Basically, yeah. sometime in the uh, immediate future, it, and when I say immediate future, it could be in the next couple months, could be the next couple years. You're going to see maybe yeah. longer, maybe longer, but sometime in the near future to immediate future, you're going to see a massive disappearance of people, the, all of the true believers. That's more or less what's going to happen first. And then sometime after that, you'll see a final treaty signed. Uh, most uh, people who study in times think it's between Israel and, and the surrounding neighbors. But the treaty that's signed is a covenant with many is how it's referred. In the Bible, they call it a covenant with many. It's signed for seven years. Yeah. So, so once that treaty is signed, 
for a specific seven year period and Israel I'm sure will be one of the signers once that is signed you can count to the day seven years Jesus will stand physically on the Mount of Olives split it in two and things go from there between now and then you've got seven years of wrath judgment and uh, hell on earth that's that's what i was gonna say that's what so it, it basically so people this, confuse the 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 rapture which is the disappearance of of the true believers they confuse that with the second coming so they're like oh well no it's not yet it there's still all this other stuff that has to happen first so <laughs> go, go um, ahead. ask away I'll, I'll do my best to answer if i don't know i'll tell you no it's not a question it's oh, okay. it's it's a observation that sure, go ahead. so if all of this is lining up steven yeah. it's good to see you thank you for coming um that of course the evil is gonna ramp up and yeah so I think that's what people need to be prepared for. And Gigi, yep. I really like this. Gigi says, super positive energy is filling the earth. The more we love, the bigger it gets. That's the shift, except we are going through the storm to get there. And Well, me personally, I, I would rather go out on the first boat uh, rather than be here for the final seven years. If you guys want to stay you can i would not but hey everybody's got to do what they think is good for them well uh, uh, as far as your own decision i'm gonna try and go but <laughs> if i don't i don't i well I mean, it's we it's real, it's it. real simple you're a pretty <laughs> smart lady miss bonnie it's, it's super simple i know you've heard me say it a hundred times probably before it's really simple if you want to be assured that you're going to go out on the first boat and not be here for the final seven years. It's very simple. All you have to do is accept Jesus as your Savior, which is a very simple process that requires faith in his finished work of what he did with his life, death, and resurrection, which can be found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. I've already done that. Yeah, so if you've done that, and you've lived your life to serve the Lord every day, which is what we do anyway. You don't have to do anything once you've accepted him other than read oh, your I word, think... uh, read the Bible and talk to him. So as long as you've accepted him as his, as your Savior, then you're good. It, and you know, supposed to live. Well, you still have to live your, you still have to live your life. It, it, and still do your best to be a disciple. Sure, absolutely. Yes. And absolutely so, should. Um, stands alone. Said there's a lot to happen before the second coming. Seven years after the end. Stands alone is correct. Yep. So. There's a bunch. Um, the Antichrist hasn't come back yet. Yeah, well, the Antichrist won't show up until after the 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 true believers, the ones who have accepted Christ as Savior, once once we're taken out, then then you'll see the peace treaty sign and you'll see the Antichrist come to power. He'll probably yeah. be involved in the signing of, of said treaty, which Thank some you, people you. speculate that it could involve the rebuilding of the temple, which uh, they're already chomping at the bit to do that anyway. <laughs> Ex boot liquor, it's every month. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Damn, good to see you. So, um, um, oh, what was I going to say? I keep reading the chat and losing my thought. No, no, you're um, good. Oh, I, well, I'm driving, so I can't read chat. No, no. <laughs> I, I got my hands free device. And... But I, tr I do believe that believers will be left to. Um, try to lead others to Christ. Well, there will be people here who think they're ready to go, 
and have done the stuff to, to, to go on the rapture, but will not. And when they're left behind, them and 144,000, uh, the two witnesses and angels uh, flying across the heavens, uh, they'll be able to hear the gospel and have a chance to accept Jesus before it's too late. <laughs> the difference being is after the church is gone, uh, you accepting Christ as Savior will cost you your life and you'll lose your head, literally. Right. William, that's not good. <laughs> no, I like my head attached, but... So do I. <laughs> uh, I, I. I plan on going out on the first boat, which is how I refer to the rapture. Uh, yeah. So I plan on going out on the first boat. That's my plan. Yeah, I was just watching a Viking movie, and and um, one of them. There's a lord, always a yeah. a lord over yeah. everybody, and right. um, they did a court thing. This man had murdered somebody and um his sentence was death and but he was allowed to request his how his execution would be and he said uh losing his head <laughs> yeah i was gonna say either it, it would either have been losing his head or a warrior's death is usually what they uh do for the movies and I think that somewhat ties in with with real life. I I believe I'm not I'm not a historical expert, but <laughs> I don't know. But um, but it was cool whenever he went up there and and um, the there was a man with his son, and he was saying that his son was ready for manhood at 12 years old. And he said, his son was asking questions. And he said, why is he smiling? And he said, that's the way we do it. With no, you, you show no fear. You show right. no, um, and even though he was guilty and he knew it. Right. <laughs> uh, and that's, but still, yeah, I, I would rather keep my head. <laughs> right. Well, like I said, that's why I plan on leaving with the first boat. Even though my brain doesn't work right sometimes. <laughs> yeah. No fear. <laughs> yeah. Nothing to fear. Bible tells us that a hundred times. Well, more than that. But well, 365, still. it says, do not fear. Yes. <laughs> One for each day of the week. Yes. Or year. I mean, but. I keep putting the link if any of y'all want to come up. GG. John. Yeah, I don't bite, I promise. And well, unless you ask. <laughs> Kiss off. Good night. <laughs> Ice but, uh, cream. Yeah, things are going to get interesting, I think. I, I just I don't see it that bad yet. It, oh no, okay. not yet. Uh, we haven't seen anything yet. This is all, like I said, this is all the prelude to all the bad stuff. This is a yeah. preview of what's coming, all the stuff we're seeing now. Because if you take a look at all the stuff that's, say, over the last decade that's happened, it's all mm, foreshadowing, I guess is a good, the best word I can think of off, off my head, of what's to come during the tribulation where you have your seven years of wrath, the trumpets, the bulls, and all that other stuff in Revelation. Yeah. That's all coming down the road. This is just getting everything set up for the one world government, uh, the one one world religion and one world currency. That's what they're trying to start implementing now, but won't be fully implemented until after the, the church is gone and and they sign that seven year treaty. They might do some of the currency stuff now, possibly. 
because uh, I know they've been talking about doing those digital uh, dollars or whatever you want to call them. Be rich, winner. Yeah. Well, and that's is what it is. Um, right. Brother just keeps calling me over and over. Um. The only thing about this eclipse is the amount of people that are coming to, to watch it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and, well, and, and, and how's that going to collide with all these uh, hundreds of thousands of illegal aliens pouring over the border every day? Well, or, or being bussed or airplane to different parts of the country. I don't know, but they're not in my area. The, the border <laughs> is 200 miles away. So, I'm yeah. Not. Well, if they're not in your area, then then you're blessed. Uh, consider yourself fortunate. Yeah, our our sheriff's pretty adamant about that. And but the river is two hundred miles from me. And sure. So, um, it's just it, our roads are um kind of like I guess you would call them back roads. They're not. They're not yeah. interstates or anything like well, that. Yeah, yeah. And, You've mentioned that I think a couple of streams back. You mentioned that that they were Yeah. And yeah. so they're not set up for the kind of traffic that is expected to come. <laughs> and that's right. why I'm staying home. And that's why I mentioned that about the yeah. accidents and the fatalities, because it's um yeah. it is a Concern. Thanksgiving, we had so many this year, it, or last well, year. And, that's, and that, that's the thing. If, if something like a uh, Fantastic Freddy, for uh, safe terminology, so you don't get <laughs> immediately shut down, uh, say something happens and you got all these people along the line of totality, how are you going to get all those people out of there? Imagine all the chaos of trying to get all those people out of there. Well, and that's what they're talking if about did. in that link for Austin that I, I put in there is mm -hmm. the emergency services, of course, are trying to make sure that they have a clear path to get to anybody who would be in need. And also right. the day after, um, someone, the head person from Bergstrom Airport was there. And she was saying the next day is going to be crazy also with people leaving. And she said that. Sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. The day after everybody trying to travel back. Yeah. Yes. The airport is already like. Oh, airports, trains, buses, highways. But, yeah, it's all going to be swamped. <laughs> yes. So that's, I mean, count on not going on the roads for, I would say, at least four days. The, uh, I could see a couple. I don't know if it'd take more than that to get everything cleared up. I, I well, me, it's the, the, the two days before on, the day of and two days after. Not getting on the Oh, road. I got you. Two days before the day of, I got you. Okay, yes. then yeah, that makes sense. The Four, four days in that sense, that, that makes sense. Maybe that, oh, excuse me. that they were up in the age to 65, even. Yeah, retirees being re recalled, concerning. And that's the thing, you know, how many countries are not at war right now? Usually you're like, okay, there, no, there's, a, there's, there's two or three countries at war. Them. Now it's like, crazy how many are involved in war and and gg i did see that about niagara falls state of emergency um that's why i was listening to that austin thing because i heard him say uh what did he say does it disaster preparedness or something they better not put us in a state of emergency because you know what that does that that turns it over to the authorities. Yep, <laughs> in every way. Yeah, some uh, some counties in Texas 
uh, have already declared a state of emergency, actually. Really? Well, really? we have it. <laughs> um, no, I know you have it. And the guy I talked to, I don't remember what county he said. He was doing a live stream just a little bit ago, uh, yeah. briefly. But so I know there's at least one county in Texas that did a state of emergency. But yeah. if there's any more than that, I, I don't know. I haven't really heard other than the one. And I think Indiana. there are other states that may have done that, too, I would think. I agree with this comment. <laughs> um, which which comment? A state of emergency makes me think they're going for gun grabs. Oh, uh, well, they'll go for martial law first before they go for gun grabs. They'll do the martial law first to, uh, in an effort to suspend the Constitution, and then they'll come for your guns. Navy vet said state of emergency declared in Kentucky, West Virginia, Arkansas, Ohio, Indiana, Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada, and several counties in other states. Sounds about right. Thanks for looking yes. it up. Like I said, I can't. I, I would have looked it up, but I'm driving. So. <laughs> Me looking it up would cause an accident, and we don't want that. <laughs> right. Call for traffic. Cough. Please. <laughs> yeah, we know what that is. Um, it just gives them the right to have more help for all the people coming. I'm not worried at all. Sure. Well, if, if they've just seen, I, depending, depending <laughs> on, on how it all plays out, they could Lahaina, uh, uh, just try to get the uh, blue hats in here, depending on how things go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> But I, I don't think they'll take it that far, although they, they may try something. Well, and that's what I'm wondering. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how this affects well, the uh, crime uh, in the areas that do have total, that, that have all these people coming in. Because it sure. kind of seems like with that many people coming in, it would go down that the crime would go down because there's so many people, but then it depends on. Well, it, it could go up. It just depends on the people. <laughs> yes. Honestly. True. Um, but it, but it'd I be interesting to see how, how it. Yeah. I don't know. It, it, yeah. I want to see no. afterwards the results of that. And well, and here, here's something else to keep a couple things to keep in mind. Uh, that many people it, coming in to, to be in the path of totality uh, running, you know, from down in Texas all the way up to uh, Maine, all those areas that have those massive numbers of people using the cell phone and Wi-Fi networks, that could cause problems. Oh, well, maybe that, uh, it, you know, it'll slow down and slow down the network as it were, or cause it to, Oh, uh, have too much traffic and overload the network. Yeah. Um, what Navy vet said here, the armories for our National Guard are fuller because everybody's sending their National Guard here for the border. Yep. So yep. I can't go by that. <laughs> and um, Frog, this eclipse is expected to last twice as long as the 2017 one. The, it's yes. like four and a half so, minutes, I believe. Well, is what I've heard in most yeah. areas of the of the eclipse, the total eclipse. But the whole process of it is like four hours or something like that. It's it's a, well, if you talked about when it first starts to come across to block yes. the the. the yeah. Sun or whatever to the ending, it, it might be yeah. an hour or two. Sure, it could be. Well, here it, they're saying like four hours. It, it depends on where you're at, how long that process will take. Sure. And how long it'll last. Because some places, I think Creek Squad was saying that it's like a minute and something where he's at in Louisiana. So sure. it just, it depends on where you're at. 
Well, like I know up here where I live in Northwest Illinois, we're supposed to be able to see uh, 90% of the totality. We're not anywhere near the path of totality, but we should still be able to witness uh, from where it is in Southern Illinois. Uh, hey, Pat, good to see you. You know, we um, should be able to see at least 90% of what's going on with the eclipse. What has Matt suits? Stands alone? I hadn't heard anything about hazmat suits, but I haven't either. Although um, you know, I, 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 I had a thought. If so, I, I hope and pray it goes off without an, without a hitch and there's no problems, but if something does happen, I can almost guarantee they're going to try to make it look look like a natural disaster. Oh, we can. Or, or, or something natural causes hopefully nothing happens and hopefully everybody gets home safe but there is a chance i'm gonna drop that link again for austin's speech <laughs> if anybody wants to listen to it um but that's where nasa is gonna be is in austin not where I thought they were going to be out west more, but no, and who knows? Because in the speech, it seems like they say they're going to have several stations set up throughout the. I, I, I did hear that, yeah. Multiple I don't stations. know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure of all the locations, but it, I, I do recall them saying something about multiple locations. And we do have hills here. I've been posting pictures for y'all <laughs> on the um, and videos of the hills. You got and, hills? Yeah, we have hills. <laughs> and, I mean, it would be a good spot to be um, to view anything sure. in the sky. So, I don't know. I mean... Not where I'm yeah, at. Possibly. Right. <laughs> like I'm in the middle of hills. <laughs> That's why we don't get um, tornadoes that hit here really. Yeah, that's, like, yes. that's like my hometown, same thing, except for instead of us being uh, like we're at the bottom of the hill and then there's a town close to us. They're up near the top of the hill uh as far as the topography goes and so all the tornadoes beeline for the top for where they're at top of the hill oh, for all sinners we are saved by grace a gift from god because of christ god sees us as holy and blameless now because of christ thank you hilarious too amen Yes, we do have to repent. That was one of the other scriptures was then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission yep. of sin and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that is Acts 2.38. And yes, I can see the troublemakers <laughs> totally making what I said <laughs> turn into, yeah, a lot could happen during it. Um, yep. The temperature is going to drop like 20 degrees, I think they said. And uh, hmm. I, can't, I don't believe it's going to be total darkness, but it'll be darker it, it, it'll be yeah it'll definitely be fairly dark i don't know how, how dark it's supposed to get but yes yes grace is again uh, although i think uh, either saturday or sunday I, i'm gonna run over to one of the local truck stops and grab some of those eclipse sunglasses hopefully we got good enough uh non-cloud cover where i can see it yeah I, I'm just, I'm not even going to watch it. I, well, and, 
I saw somebody say earlier, and it, that's funny because I'm going to have my granddaughter the whole time because mm -hmm. my daughter and her husband have to work like nonstop. They have to be on site. So um, they can't even leave. So I'll right. have my granddaughter and that's what I was thinking. We'll just be sitting in here and praying and well, <laughs> I'll I'll watch it if the skies are clear in northwest Illinois uh, where I'll be. Hey Eric. If the skies are clear I'll watch it. Otherwise I'll just hop online and find someone who's live streaming it. Oh yeah. And I'm sure there'll be people doing that too. But one of the videos I showed he was uh well, I don't know what he was. Whatever they are that are, that do all the measurements and everything when things like this happen. <laughs> One of those people. <laughs> Apple dumpling. Good to see you. It's been a minute. <laughs> I'm surprised no one. Else. Oh, it was hot today. It was 82 here. Well, Texas does get warm most of, the, most of the years. I yeah, know, I mean, but, but to, I mean, to be, it's, be fair, though, you guys are warm most of the year. You got, like, yeah, what, two months during the year where you get down to, like, 60 degrees? <laughs> no, it's a little lower well, than we've that. we've got down to 60. Boo -hoo -hoo. 50. <laughs> oh, but, 50. Oh, poor you. We that, didn't that's have like a short, uh, well, long shorts I think and, we, and a long sleeve t-shirt, but okay for you. Bad. We're we're not 60 is just shorts and a t-shirt. <laughs> we're used to well, the heat. you spent all your time in yeah, you you been you spent all your time in the heat. You haven't been up here in the cold weather. Yes. Don't want to be. <laughs> I mean, I might be cold um, if I can get warm once in a while. But sure. Um, and the same with the heat. I don't mind the heat as long as I can get cool once in a while. It's, sure. It, we all have that normal body temperature that that's where it should stay. But sometimes it gets a little higher or lower. <laughs> sometimes it does. Drake going through the sky. Yeah, they're trying to usher it in so hot today. Yep. <laughs> All right, let's see now. What do we got here for the... Trying to take a second and make sure I get my exit here. Yeah, I saw an eclipse when I was a kid, and that was the last. For me. The I last just, eclipse I saw in person was uh, mm -hmm. when I was at, getting ready to graduate high school in like '97 or '96. Mm -hmm. There was one where, I, where uh, that was clearly visible in Northwest Illinois in the mid mm -hmm. to late '90s. Yeah, in. Yeah, they've been more visible other places, different times. What they say, every seven years, there's an eclipse. Sometimes it can be over Japan or China, and so we don't see it at all. Or, it, right. So that's what I, all along I've been saying, what is the hype on this one? They are selling T-shirts like crazy here. I don't know. They've been by. trying to hype it up and, and and everything. I don't, I don't know what's going on with that. And the the glasses, they're all like yeah, the the solar uh, observing glasses. They did the same asking, thing with the one. Uh, they did the same same thing with the last one about seven years ago. Oh, we were trying to sell T-shirts. I think. Well, I don't know, but people have been asking me to mail them glasses. The the eclipse glasses and and then I have a niece that she's coming from Arizona and her and her husband and it's just like what what is going on here? Why people lost their minds they're like we gotta go see it we gotta go see it 
Yes. And that uh, it, I, I don't know. They lost their minds, Bunny. Yes. And all the warnings that we keep getting from the county and the city. And it's just uh, like, I mean, that's more talking heads trying to make everybody afraid than anything else. Or at least I hope so. Although they could be privy to uh, something getting ready to be happen that someone uh, said, hey, we're going to do X. Well, and I think around here, it's because of the traffic. And so the no trespassing signs, they are selling like hotcakes. Everyone oh, is sure. all over the place. I've seen people order 20 of them. And it's like, 20? <laughs> you must have a big place. <laughs> well, they want to make sure they get the message. Well, I'm, I've got four. <laughs> and... So, yeah. If I ever made no trespassing signs for any property I owned, I'd make enough to cover uh, the the major access ways of the property. But it wouldn't be your normal uh, warning sign uh, for, for no trespassing. It would just top of the sign would have a picture of a sniper rifle. The rest of it would say, you know, it'd have your warning. If you can read this, you're within range. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe sneak in no trespassing somewhere in fine print on the sign. Yeah, the communication's an issue. Um, they did say that... Well, depending on how many people are trying to use the cell phone network at the same time, it could be a big yes. issue. Well, and, and if, if there's going to be that many people in the area, you know they are. And sure. so... They said with the 911 that there's a way to, that you can text 911. Yeah, like a text to 911 in some areas, that is a thing, yes. Yeah, that's what they were saying in that Austin thing. Yeah, you can put 911 as the number and you can hit t t whatever your text message is and send it to 911. I never knew that. Not all of them. I don't know how many parts of the country have that, but I know there are a few. Yeah. Oh, and did y'all see the weather? There is snow hitting see north. The weather. I, I'm driving in it. <laughs> but is, is it snowing there now? Sorry, go ahead. It was snowing earlier in the day uh, up in Chicago, but not sticking to the ground. And over by um, the north, uh, over by the Iowa, Illinois border on Interstate 80, there was some snow over that way. In April. That's great. But I've seen snow here in April. So it's not uh, totally. I, I saw snow. snow in June one time. When I, was a, when I was a kid, there was snow in June. Oh, wow. Uh, briefly. Well, you can, you know, it didn't stick or anything, but. Yeah, it's snowing in southern Ontario, Canada. Goodness. Well, I would expect snow in southern Canada, but, you know, that's me. You who are trying to be justified by the law have been severed from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. Yeah, they're basically saying that uh, it's not by your works, it's by faith. I'm pretty sure that's what she was going for. I, c I could be wrong. That's Galatians 5.4. Um, yeah. yeah, I've seen a lot about that. The, the law. And well, that's a whole nother live sometime. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that's another whole live. We could spend hours on that. Uh, quite honestly. Because <laughs> that, that's a, a thing that I've been questioning. Well, well the, the, the Cliff Notes version for that, all I'll say is the law points you to the fact that you need a savior. You're not good enough to keep it on your own. That's what the law does. Okay, Dorinda. And um, um, I have to call my brother first. Just letting you know. Sorry. <laughs> oh, you're good. Um, I do need to close this one down. Um, he has tried to call me like 
six, seven times. And oh, well, if so, you called you that many times, it might be important. So you gotta shut down, yep. shut it down, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one, Miss Bunny. I really appreciate you coming up, Meat Puppet, and helping yeah, me. Yeah, I did. It. I had about an hour and change drive, and so <laughs> it, it was beneficial to both. <laughs> no frog. <laughs> oh, to Dorinda's. Okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> well, you be safe, Meat Puppet. Ollie, I'll be safe. Try to stay out of the traffic. Just. Just do whatever you feel is best for you and your family. We're kind of just... Yeah, the, the only thing I would recommend, y'all are free to do what you want. Yes. I heard a few things here and there. But the only thing I'll say is it, if you're not sure whether you should go, but you want to see it, stay at home, watch it on the internet. Or walk outside. if you're yeah, or, or walk outside and look up if you're close enough. That's all I got to do is just walk outside and it's right there. <laughs> yeah. um, it's, it, we're not, I, you know, with her being five. Right. Even with the glasses, I don't trust the glasses. Well, the, I mean, those uh, solar eclipse glasses actually work pretty well. They're designed specifically for doing that kind of thing. But Little cardboard encased lenses. Work well, really? that's, those little lenses are aluminum foil, and I forget what else. Mm. Uh, but it's it's enough of a filter the way they do it with those glasses. Uh, it's it's not going to hurt anything. I don't know. I just I used the last time I saw an eclipse in person. They had those same style eclipse glasses that they're selling now, and mm -hmm. I put them on and looked directly at the sun. They work just fine. Okay. For the eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> or if you're not sure, you can hold your cell phone up to it and look at it through the screen on your cell phone. That works too. Turn your camera on, point it up, and you can watch the eclipse through your cell phone camera. If you put the glasses over it, they got to have that lens over it. They, they were saying even filter that. So that's what the well, NASA's doing. They have the telescopes that have the. Dumb, but okay. They have the filter over the lens so that. You can look up at it. Well, anyway. Whatever. Yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> that's them. They can do what they want. Yes. <laughs> Y'all have a good night. God bless you. Stay safe. Please. Yep. <laughs> and I hope to see y'all soon. Hopefully. I don't know we'll catch you. <laughs> Maybe Monday night just to make sure everybody's good. <laughs> Sure, it could be interesting. Yes. <laughs> Indies right. live Friday, I think. And then then um Freak Squad karaoke. If y'all wanna have some fun and I'm telling you they are really getting good at the karaoke. Check them out. Sheena with her rocks and jewelry. She's she's a really good person. Nunya, Texas, listen to some of his videos. Oh, good night, Meat Puppet. <laughs> okay, he jumped off. Um, JM's got the games going. Um, there's there's just, I know y'all can find places to go. There's, there's good people out there that are putting out good messages too. Definitely go to Dig Deeper Ministries. Um Remote, I don't know if remote's been on. <laughs> Night meat puppet, thank you. Um, Diamond Lil. There's a lot of places y'all can go for spiritual lifting also. <laughs> so, I'll take care. We'll see you soon. God bless you and have a good night. Love y'all.